Bum 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 What's going on here? Well, as you can tell by the title card for the video, we are doing something different today here in the Whiskey Den. I am going to show you how to make the classic, definitive James Bond Vester Martini shaken, not stirred. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, how you doing today? It's me, David, coming to you from my whiskey den here in central Ohio. And as mentioned, we are not doing whiskey of any type today. We are doing a classic James Bond Vesper Martini, shaken, not stirred. So, um, just, I grew, I don't want to say grew up. Well, I grew up, of course, with the James Bond franchise. I mean, um, I remember Diamonds Are Forever. I remember the commercials that far back. Remember when um, the big thing was when Roger Moore took over the role in 73 for Live and Let Die. And I mean, James Bond, even though I wasn't, I was too young to really watch the movies, was a huge summer blockbuster. On ABC television here in the United States, um, they would run the previous James Bond films, and those were events. Um, you know, I remember my dad watching from Russia with Love, and uh, that was the most vivid one um, that I remember. So anyway, enough about the recollections. Um, oh, even as far as, so back in the 80s, I had a friend who was a bit old, a little older than me, Dennis, and he really introduced me to James Bond. And as, since I was a young adult, I really got into him. Even um, <laughs> my favorite Bond film is Honor Majesty Secret Service. I got even the opportunity some years ago to meet George Lazenby, and he graciously signed my Blu-ray um, cover so and he is a really cool guy um now the vesper martini was introduced in the very first james bond novel casino royale unfortunately i was searching for my copy of the book and i must have gotten rid of it i got must have gotten rid of my james bond novels at some point i had a few left or unless they're squirreled away somewhere but I did go onto the old interweb and I've got the, I made sure I had the proper recipe. And th it's interesting in the movies, I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit. I'll get to making the drink. In the films, <clears throat> Bond typically orders a vodka martini, shaken, not stirred. Um, the, the first time he actually ordered a Vesper was in the, um, Daniel Craig adaptation of the novel Casino Royale. Probably the best of the Daniel Craig movies. I don't want to get on the whole Daniel Craig kick. Um, but least favorite Bond, least favorite series of Bond films. Those movies turned Bond into a generic action, action character, action hero. Not very James Bondish. Um, now the... Quantum of Solace in 2008 also um, also featured Bond ordering a Vesper. So here we go. Um, I am going to now make the I'm going to show you what it's all about. So he orders it in a deep champagne goblet. We are using a martini glass. And we are going to use, of course, plenty of ice. And put that now if I'm making this for friends I'm not gonna take my even though they're clean hands <laughs> and get get you know the ice out of, I'll just go to my refrigerator and uh, let me uh, let me uh, dry my hands now um, okay <laughs> so we got ice in the shaker we are first going to take a half measure or half a shot 
of Lillet. The recipe for the Vesper calls for quina. Let me see. I have to get back here. Quina Lillet or Lillet. And I used to be able to buy this it, when I lived in Idaho. It was a regularly stocked item in the liquor stores. Here in Ohio, it's not available. And I've been waiting <laughs> so patiently to find um, a bottle of Lillet. I'll put that right there. And that's used in the place of vermouth. Now, Kenya, Kina Lillet had a little bit more of a bitter taste. It, this is a white wine aspartif, which is a little bit sweeter. It was reformulated in 1986. The Lillet Blanc, there is also a red version. So since it is sweeter, I what I do is I take some Angostura aromatic bitters, which is a product of Trinidad. I put two dashes in there. I say that because my first wife was from Trinidad and I had actually passed the Ag, 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 Angostura <laughs> um, company, place, where, whatever you want to call it, um, whenever I was down in Port of Spain, but that's been years ago. Um, then we're going to do, in the book, calls for three measures of Gordon's gin, but see, back in 53, all this stuff was probably... A better formulation tasted better Gordon's gin today is just you know it's cheap bottom shelf stuff one two three and I am not I probably had this bottle for <laughs> probably since I lived in Idaho. <laughs> um, I'm not a gin person, um, but I do like it in the in this uh, martini. Well, there's a reason why. So, and then a measure of vodka. And for this, I usually have used um, um, Stolichnia, and I'm not forming any sort of political opinion since it's a Russian thing, but um, again, I got this quite a while ago. This is Vox, distilled five times. It's even interesting on the label above the word Vox. <laughs> it looks like the James Bond gum barrel in a V, so hey, why not? Hey, and so that is what we've got. These three. So we've got half a measure of Lillet, Instead of the white dry vermouth, half a measure, half a shot with two dashes of the bitters, three measures of the gin, gin of your choice, and a measure of vodka. Shaken, not stirred. Now, instead of the bitters, you can also use... Um, Quinine, quinine, and the bitters give it a little bit darker, darker look. And if you watch the Casino Royale film, you will, I think, if remember right, you will notice that you will uh, get the same thing. You'll see the same thing. Then we take, we garnish not with olives, but with a. He said a thin slice of lemon peel. <laughs> I don't know how thin, that's kind of wide, but hey. Um, now, while I'm letting that sit for a minute, it says here, this, this martini was not Fleming's creation. It was devised by his friend Ivar Bryce. And um, because uh, Fleming had, um, had dedicated the book Casino Royale um, to this Ivar Bryce, who mixed the first Vesper and said the good word. And it never really appeared again because Fleming actually tried it after he read the novel or wrote the novel and deemed he did not enjoy this. So that's probably why Bond stuck to vodka martinis because Fle Ian Fleming did enjoy his vodka. So let's see what we got. 
Oh man, I missed you, Vesper. Um, wow. So has that bitter aftertaste. So probably one dash of bitters next next time. Um, but with I like I said, I'm not I don't care for gin. And vodka sometimes can get a little bit tasting like rubbing alcohol. But the nice thing is with these these ratios, the vodka kind of offsets that berry taste of the gin. That's really what I don't care much for is that that berry taste. Um, and then the little A, I mean, it, it doesn't make it taste like a dirty martini or anything like that, like the vermouth does. It, it does have that little bit of a bitter aftertaste, but it's also a very nice, light, subtle flavor. And if you are into martinis, hey, <laughs> That is good. This used to be years ago when I could find the Lillet was my go-to drink. Um, and I actually really enjoy having this with shrimp scampi for some reason. Um, probably because of that lemon uh, garnish. Gives a, a little bit of a, a citric flavor as well. Um, but now that I found my Lillet or Lillet, I can be a happy camper now. And for you... <laughs> this is the first, like I said, first time I've had this probably in about seven years. So this is kind of another first taste video all over again. So next time you order a vodka martini and it's shaken, not stirred, give yourself the chance and try the Vespa. You'll be happy you did. And um, if, again, if you're afraid of a heavy like rubbing alcohol type of flavor. I mean, this is this is good stuff. And it is, to me, a nice alternative over having, I hate saying this, having bourbon, <laughs> uh, which I do enjoy my bourbon, as you, as you well know. So um, there you go. The Vesper Martini, shaken, not stirred, as drank by... James Bond in the novel and film version, Eon film version, of Casino Royale. Don't go looking for it in the 1967 spoof version of Casino Royale. It ain't there. So there you go. Until next time, I hope your next pour is your best pour. It is me, David, coming to you from my whiskey den, talking about martinis today. And um, I'll catch you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hey everyone, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe so you can be notified of future videos as they drop. Thanks for watching.